G'day, my name is Michelle, also known as Michelle Art. Today I'm going to go through my thought process for a project. This time it's a portrait of Blue Diamond from Steven Universe. I try to ensure I always have references to achieve what I want to achieve, but it's a little hit or miss. So for this project I have many references prepared and you'll see them throughout. The first step for a new artwork is knowing what you want to achieve. For Blue Diamond, I want a couple of things. I want beautiful detailed eyes that match her sorrow. I want highlights from the environment, probably blue and pink. And overall, I just want there to be a lot of detail. I'll tackle Blue Pearl later. I can't really teach anyone how to draw, but I can demonstrate and share my knowledge of Photoshop painting. I always begin with the face. I believe it is the most important part to get right. For this piece I am going back to grayscale to focus on the details before experimenting with shades of blue. Starting somewhere is always the hardest part, I can't figure out what I want until I get further into the picture. So I start experimenting and try to get the shading I want. I want like a strong sense of shadow from her cloak and dark bags under her eyes. Like I have said in previous videos, I paint really rough to get an idea of what I want. Then I blend it out with the soft airbrush. I constantly use the dodge tool and the burn tool to change the shadows and highlights. I use these tools in every single artwork. I make new layers when I want to edit something individually like the eyes or lips. At some point I merge the face layer onto the background layer. I don't remember doing this. I probably intended to merge two other layers. but. I can still work with it, it's just a silly mistake I didn't even see happen, so that explains why her face is now on the background layer. To get the colours, I create a soft light layer above the grayscale and then use some dark blue for the shadows. Then above that I create an overlay layer with light blue and just paint and experiment. I add more overlay layers as needed. Later I added shades of blue and purple with even more overlay layers. This is to enhance the skin and avoid it looking flat and just plain blue. To add some texture to the skin, I make yet another overlay layer and I set the hard round brush to scatter. This is so I can have hundreds of dots everywhere. I erase accordingly so you can see it but not too much. I keep working on the face whenever I think of something, like more shadow under the nose or more highlights on the eyelids. Keeping separate parts of the picture on their own layer helps with editing them later, like if you suddenly decide the hair is too dark, you can go image adjustments and you're good to go. I continue to second guess my artwork for the entire process and I will probably mess around with the colours on the face again later. The key to hair is layers. It seems I do hair differently in every artwork based on what I'm feeling. For example, I want nice simple hair that flows naturally and shines. Her hair is a light blue but it will look almost white. So I start with a darker shade, then paint highlights on top with a hairbrush, custom made and provided online by Sakimi-chan. Add another layer or two with lighter highlights and you start to see the layers of hair. Use dodge and burn tools to enhance the shadows and highlights. For the gem, I saw an artwork on Google that I really liked. It had this amazing texture on the hair and I will attempt to recreate it or at least reference it and do something similar. I'm going to color the gem the same on all sides, then use the selection tool to increase the brightness in some areas and decrease it in others to give the gem the depth. You know, like the top bit's lighter than the sides where the shadow hits and basically make it look 3D. Now onto the hand, probably the most difficult part of the body to colour. Because she has blue skin, it will be hard to paint anything super realistic. All I'm after is a hand that looks good and is believably a hand. I'll always come back to it and keep checking to see if there's any bits I need to tweak, if I need to make the fingers more noticeable, the palm more noticeable, and stuff like that. Plus when Pearl's finished, I'll be able to have a better idea of how it will look. I know I want the sleeve to be a little transparent at the top, so I'm drawing the wrist and further down. When I draw the sleeve on top, I'll create a mask for the layer so I can erase without actually erasing. 
To do this you paint with black on the layer mask, because white means everything is clear and seen, and grey to black start to make things faded and then completely disappear. Basically I use a mask if I want to erase without erasing. That way if you change your mind later you can get it all back just by painting with white on the mask. The cloak I want to look like it has folds in the fabric. Some areas should be dark and blend in like the back of her head because I don't want that to be a focal point. The areas I do want to be noticed are folds near her shoulder or where her arm would be so it looks like it's creasing because her hands moving up like that. The side we see the least which is behind her hand, so our left side, her right shoulder, that should be not noticeable. Like I want that to blend in as well, so I'll probably make it a bit darker and see how that looks. I want it to be there, but I don't want it to grab your attention. Finally, I'll add some highlights. These will be pink mainly because um, I'm drawing her in a pink room. Some of these highlights will be at the very back of her head where it's completely dark, so you can tell that her head does end. It doesn't just fade off into the darkness. The background is meant to be a simplistic interpretation of a screenshot from the show itself and anyone familiar with the show will be able to tell where Blue Diamond is. Remember I accidentally merged the face onto the background layer? That means the background now has to be painted on a separate layer above the face, but as long as I don't paint over the face you can't see the difference. Before I start Pearl, I'll keep staring at what I've done and try to decide if I'm happy with it. Maybe there's too much contrast, maybe it's too dark, st stuff like that. Maybe I want more purple than blue. Sometimes I'll make a layer above all the other layers and make tweaks and edits with, with blending. When it's above all the other layers, it can't be affected by any of the overlay layers or any layers you make specifically to alter the saturation of the levels. And you just start painting over like Maybe I want to make her eyelids even more defined or fix her hair and have some hair flicks going over the cloak or whatever like that. To do the pink glows that you'll see a l like hints of on her cloak, that's again overlay layer, sometimes soft light layers or even a color layer. So for example, I make a new layer on top of all the others and set the color to pink and then just turned everything pink beneath it, but I don't want that much. So I make another mask and I fill it with black. And if you remember, black erases and white restores. So I hid all the pink and then I started to paint with white so I could start to see it again and decide if I liked, you know, where where I would like the highlights or if I even want a lot of highlights. Now I'll finish Pearl, but I won't go into too much detail about her because she's quite small compared to Blue Diamond and I'm going to use all the same methods and techniques. So while we're watching me paint Pearl, I thought I'd just take a m moment to talk about anatomy. Um, it's something I'm still working very hard on and it's quite difficult to convey in cartoon form. Um, you'll notice that yes, I'm using her right hand because I prefer that orientation or that angle of the hand. And I'm also not showing like where the arm is coming from. Obviously it has to be coming from her right shoulder, so the shoulder in the background, and it's not the shoulder in the foreground or the folds. So, so unless we really convey what we're trying to convey, people can get confused. And I don't think I did that very well with the shoulders. Um, basically I just drew a cloak and then had a hand coming up. So you can't really see where the hand's coming from. <laughs> Finally complete. This took around 8 hours in total and I believe it is because of all the experimenting and second guessing. Now I'll take a look back at what I actually wanted to achieve with this picture. I wanted beautifully, I wanted beautiful detailed eyes that match her sorrow. I don't know if I see them as beautiful because I'm restricted to the unique style of her eyes. So next time I might be able to really try and work on my eye technique better. But the droopy, sorrow-filled eyelid style that Blue Diamond has, I think I achieved it pretty well. And I think it represents her signature eyes. I wanted highlights and a strong light source overall. I did this um, by creating a lot of contrast and using a lot of black for shadows. If you really want something to pop 
you make the shadow super dark. I didn't do as much highlighting as I thought I would. I tested it, but I didn't like too much pink. And because she is blue diamond, I kind of wanted her to retain the blue. Lastly, I wanted lots of details everywhere. Uh, at this point in time, I can say I put in a decent amount of effort in every area, but maybe the future me will look back at this and notice all the places I could have done more. Overall though, I think this picture may succeed in grabbing viewer attention with its high contrast, and anyone that knows that character should re recognize her instantly from a distance. I enjoyed doing the dramatic lighting on Blue Pearl, and really giving her a sense of depth. I'm hoping she's the second thing people will notice. Blue Diamond's piercing eyes should be first, then her face, and then most likely the viewer will explore and see Blue Pearl. But perspective is all subjective. That's all for this video. Thanks for taking the time to sit with me and listen to my process. Now this is only just this particular picture, and every picture is a little bit different. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next picture. Take care.